Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. As you all know, I, I tend to run standalone window managers. And unlike in a desktop environment, out of the box, media keys and notifications don't tend to work. And it can seem like a little bit like a dark art getting everything functioning properly. But over the last week, I've been having a bit of a play and it's actually incredibly easy. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. Uh, as many of you know, I've been off this week, and uh, along with dealing with some family things, I've also actually had a chance to play with my system, which has been great. And one of the things that I hadn't actually sorted out up until this week was hooking up the multimedia keys on my keyboards and uh, my laptops to get them to work properly uh, on the standalone window managers that I use and to display notifications. Now, this is something that you pretty much take for granted most of the time. So let me just show you what I mean. So you should see on your screens now uh, the Marte desktop, my Marte desktop. And I've got to say that if you are running a full desktop environment, the chances are your multimedia keys already work. I'm just going to use the volume up and down keys as an example here. So on my keyboard in front of me, as well as the standard QWERTY layout, I have a few keys for volume up and volume down. So if we go to volume down, there you are. It works automatically. It's all been mapped. It can go up. It's all been mapped, and I can mute it or unmute it. Okay, all good. And if you can get that to work properly on a full desktop environment, well, that's great news because it means that the key codes that are transmitted every time you press one of the multimedia key media keys are hooked up to the right signal. And all you have to do then is modify the configuration file of your particular window manager. There is a chance, though, that it's not working. I have to say that personally, I haven't had this problem. As you know, I use a, a range of different uh, ThinkPads and all of the multimedia keys worked properly uh, on a full desktop environment in Marte. None of them worked at all uh, with standalone window managers. But what happens if even a desktop environment doesn't actually uh, recognize the key press? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. Let's move over to the terminal. As with everything to do with Linux, uh, there are many ways to do this. But just to get an overview of uh, what we're looking at and what the Linux kernel uh, names the different keys on your system, we can use a command called X modmap. And if you use it with the X modmap dash PKE uh, options, it will dump out on your screen a list of all the keys that the kernel recognizes along with the key codes. So for example, I'm piping this through less because it's quite a long file and you'll get something that looks a little bit like that. If I move all the way down to key code 121, which I know from looking at this earlier are my multimedia keys for volume, you can see that code 121, 122, and 123 are being output here uh, every time I hit these keys, or at least that is what the kernel is expecting to pick up. And you can see that it calls them these particular names. XF86 Audio Mute, XF86 Audio Lower Volume, XF86 Audio Raise Volume. Now, if it's not working, it could be because there's a mismatch between the key code number against the actual name of the key. 
and there's a way that you can test this. So let's just uh, clear the screen. And the way you can test it is with a little utility called ZEV or XEV. So if I run XEV, you may need to install this package. And I just uh, click return. And then I pick a key. So let's pick the F1 key here. And you'll notice I'm going to hit the F1 key a couple of times that it keeps outputting a whole range of information each time the key is hit. And you can see within that information, it gives me the key code 67. So I know at the moment that key code 67 is the code that is being issued every time I hit the F1 key. If I hit the F2 key, you can see that's key code 68. Okay, all good. So where do we actually go from here? Well, let's clear the screen again. And let's go back to that X mod map PKE. And what did we say? Code 6167. Slash question slash. Doesn't really do a lot, does it? <laughs> multiply, multiply, multiply. Okay. So if you've got a mismatched key code with uh, the particular key that you want to do a certain task, there's a few things that you can do. But the main thing to do is to run that again, but rather than just running xmodmap-pke, pipe it onto your desktop and call it xmodmap. You'll then get a file, and you can edit that file, and you can make sure that the correct code is allocated to your XF86 volume keys. You'll then need to make sure that that xmodmap file or that .xmodmap file is started up with your system. So if you use a standalone window manager and you don't use a login manager, you can uh, make sure that you pull this in in your xinitrc file. Um, I believe if you use something like GDM, LightDM, S. DM or any of those, then it will automatically read it. And after you've done that, hopefully, hopefully, in a full disk desktop environment, the key should start working. Okay, all good. Now, as I say, I didn't actually have to go through that process because the key codes and the multimedia keys seem to be aligned correctly. That didn't help me as far as getting them actually working within the standalone window managers, though. Luckily, that's simply a case of creating a custom key binding. How you do this is going to vary from window manager to window manager, and I'm going to use DWM and Qtile as examples, but ultimately, all you need to do is to hook up a key binding to the A mixer command or the pulse audio control command. You've got a few options there and it should just work. So just as an example, uh, I'm using my uh, Qtile um, window manager here. I know I've not shown this before. I've got it configured this week and I will be doing a separate video about it. Um, but you can see uh, Vim open there uh, on my screen and what I have here is a section uh, for my volume keys, and I've created key bindings using the AMixer command uh, linked to the XF86 audio mute, the XF86 audio lower volume, and the XF86 audio raise volume. If uh, you remember, they were the names that the kernel recognizes when we look to the X mod map command. So they're all uh, sorted out and Qtile has this nice little widget where if you raise or lower the volume, you can see it up here, uh, it goes up and down. So I'm going to go to my multimedia keys and there you go, it's going down in 5% or all the way up again. And if I hit the mute button, it mutes. 
So, all good. And for Qtile, that's all well and good. But, unfortunately, uh, DWM doesn't have one of these nice little widgets. So I then started thinking, wouldn't it be good to have some sort of notification that could show me every time I'm hitting uh, the volume up, volume down keys, just to give me a visual check. Well, most desktop environments come with a notification server. Marte's got one built in already. And the magic behind a full desktop environment links up the notifications to the presses of your multimedia keys. No such thing happens with a window manager. So how do we go about linking up um, a notification with the volume command that's generated every time I hit volume up, volume down? Right, so moving back to the terminal, if you want to send a message to your notification server, which most desktop environments build it build in automatically, you use the notify send command. So I've got an example here. You can see in the terminal, notify send test, a test message. Keep an eye on the top right-hand corner. There you go, test, a test message. Brilliant. Question is, how do we hook this up to the volume keys so that a notification is issued as soon as I change the volume up and down. So thinking about this, I thought to myself, well, if it's possible to hook up uh, a standard volume up, volume down command to a key binding, surely if I had a script that managed that volume up, volume down, and also sent a notification at the same time, I could just hook the script up to the key binding rather than just using the up down volume uh, command as a key binding so i did a little bit of searching and this is what i came up with initially i didn't particularly want to use the built-in notification server uh, that was already pre-configured for the likes of marte and i thought maybe there's a lighter weight version that i can use and I've got the Arch Wiki page open here uh, under an entry for Dunst. Dunst is a lightweight notification server that is particularly suited for window managers, standalone window managers. More than that, it doesn't necessarily conflict with the pre built window manager in your desktop environment. Because rather than using the send notify command, it can also use a command called dunstify, which only dunst will pick up. So I thought, well, that might, you know, help to avoid some conflicts. Because if I just send send notify um, as a notification, it could use whichever notification server it picks up straight away. Dunst also has the advantage that uh, there is a configuration file, and as it says there, there's a default in USR share dunst dunst RC, and if you copy that into your config directory, you can play about with the colors, the size, and all sorts of bits and pieces, including assigning um, an ID number to each notification, so that rather than your notifications stacking up on the desk, each one just replaces the other, which can be quite useful if you have something like a volume bar, because rather than just having a different notification every time you up or down the volume by 5%, it can just show as a continuous bar. So, all good, I thought. How do I actually go about getting a script that will use this? And again, the Google search... Uh, I just searched for uh, Dunst um, notification scripts, and I came up with a couple of notification uh, no, scripts from uh, on GitHub from a 
guy called Blaradox. Thank you very much anyway, Blaradox. And he's got one there for brightness controls and one there for volume. And I thought, right, so maybe all I have to do is hook these up and uh, everything will work. So that was my thought. The trouble is, when it came to DWM, it wasn't quite as simple as Qtile. Uh, I needed to fiddle about a little bit. Uh, let me just move to the terminal and I'll show you what I mean. So we're back in the terminal now and I've got my config.h here and lots of Googling, believe me, an awful lot of Googling. And what I had to do is I had to add two separate entries. First of all, I had to add an entry under this static constant char uh, section where I've got a couple of shortcuts there to volume up, down, and mute. I've called the script DWM notify, which made makes sense to me, and I've given it the options of up, down, or mute. So you have to create this entry under the static constant char set section. Let's go down from there. Once we've done that, we can then create the key bindings. And again, it has its own particular way of doing it within DWM. And by the way, all of my DWM configs are on my GitLab, so have a look for that. And you can see it's in a different format to Qtile, but theoretically, that should all work. It should work, but it didn't work. And it took me forever to try and find out what it was. And like most things, it's the tiny little things that don't work. Let me show you what I did that got it all working properly. Okay, um, it was a simple thing, really. In dwm.c, what I had to include as an extra is this section here where we're actually including the xf86keysim.h into the dwmc file. And until I did that, nothing worked at all. But, right, let's go to the desktop uh, again. So hopefully it works this time. And let me hit uh, the volume keys. And there you go. You can see... The notifications now are showing on the uh, top right-hand corner. I can mute them. I can enable them. And there you go. It works. So, finally cracked it. So that's it for today. Um, just a small, short video showing you what... I've been trying to fiddle about with over the last few days. And if anybody wants to follow along and finds this uh, video useful, well, feel free. Um, by all means, you can pull down uh, all my config files from my GitLab page as well. So that's it for today. Uh, I will see you on Saturday. In the meantime, join me on Library. Join me on Facebook, and as far as my patrons are concerned, thank you so much, guys. Uh, your support has really helped over the last months and weeks. And I'll see you next week, or rather, I'll see you on Saturday. Cheers. <laughs>